Whoa, I think I'm recording. Yep. Ah, cold today. <laughs> I'm running late. And, uh, yeah, that's just the way it is. Um, intelligence. Yeah, maybe I'll make this the Apple video. Because it's kind of a follow-up to the intelligence argument. And, uh, you know, somebody left a comment, of course. All these comments. Implying that somehow a super intelligence wouldn't understand sentience. <laughs> you know, wouldn't have a subjective sentience and therefore um, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, yeah, but then doesn't that, just as my video pointed out, I mean, the whole video was about the subject that the word intelligence doesn't mean too much because intelligence that are ill-informed, they can have catastrophic ignorance and intelligence can be catastrophically broken by bits of ignorance. If they're ignorant of the most important thing, it's like if they know all the rules to Monopoly, but they don't know, you know, that $500 bills are more valuable than $100 bills or some other stupid thing like that, um, they can't play the game rationally. They're completely useless as an intelligence. There's no point in calling it intelligence anymore. So, and especially not super intelligence. Uh, so if they don't understand, if an intelligence doesn't understand, uh, that, uh, you know, would, if it would not understand us as biological organisms that are manifesting consciousness and suffering, there's no conversation. Uh, it can't be super intelligent. It just can't be. Uh, it can be, um, I mean, you might may be well informed, but even those words get tricky. And so, I mean, we really should have a word for a volume of something of large size that is fundamentally dysfunctional, useless, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, a big book with no words in it, uh, you know, something, yeah, because this is a con, this is a, a problem. <laughs> you know, it's a really big problem um, to imply that something has a stature as a functioning device, and yet it is not functioning in the most primary of the categories um, by definition of its function. Like, you know, a super intelligence really has to have the basic stuff right. If it's got the, if it's got the foundation wrong, it might as well all be wrong. I mean, that's the simple truth of it, right? I mean, if you, if, you, if you got the basic value constituents wrong, it doesn't matter what you have right. It's all irrelevant. It all just ends up being energy. You know, it's like a, a car without wheels. It can be the greatest car, the biggest engine, the shiniest paint, the greatest dashboard ever. Uh, you know, it gives massages, um, but it's not a car if it doesn't have wheels. Um, and uh, it's just kind of irritating that that's exactly the point I'm making in the video, and people still comment like they didn't even watch the video. <laughs> you know, like they're just going to pretend that isn't the subject. Uh, yeah, it's just really irritating. Um, so anyway, getting to the point of it, though... I mean, getting to the Ephelist angle in this, the life is kind of futile angle. Uh, what would be the minimum requirements of an intelligence? The minimum acknowledged truth. And uh, we're still apparently arguing about that. Um, and arguing in this stupid way. You know, ways that you keep saying, well, let's not do it this way. Let's not argue about our subjective taste, let's argue about the qualitative state of our existence. Let's not argue about what frustrates us, or what irritates us, or what pleases us, or what dissatisfies us, because yes, that's subjective. What's not subjective is the fact that there are things that please us, that we live um, being in a state of being pleased or displeased suffering or enjoying and let's understand that for what it is which is just psychology it's like when you're discussing vegetarianism 
it, you know, it really has to be discussed in the context that we are flexible in terms of our uh, biological need, that you don't have to be raised, uh, conditioned to be a meat eater, uh, that you have a choice. And that, that choice is sort of important because once your body habituates to a diet, it does take effort to rehabituate it, to convert it uh, to a new lifestyle. Uh, this is the truth. Um, but that's the conversation to be having, is what would be better to instill. If you're going to make a human being, would you make it a meat-dependent human being? Would you really? When you know that, uh, if I can give you statistical facts demonstrating that they'll live longer, and they'll likely live healthier, uh, and that there'll be a huge savings economically if they're vegetarian, would you still say, no, I'm going to make them a meat eater? <laughs> no. Would there be a logic to that? No, that's the argument to be having. Uh, we're not saying... The argument, no one's making the argument, you have to do something. The argument is, what do you support? What do you support human beings being? What do you support them becoming? Uh, damn. So, you know, we, we can never get on... I mean, you can't even have an argument if you can't argue <laughs> the same elements of the argument. And the subjective, objective crap gets so irritating. Uh, because the known truth is the existence of the consciousness. The known truth is the states that it exists in, and that those states, we know from personal experience and observed experience, I don't know what that beat was, observed experience, that uh, these states are mutable, that you go from one to another, that we all migrate from better to lesser states. Uh, throughout our lives. Uh, we can agree on that. Uh, it doesn't matter what causes the states. That's sort of, it's not irrelevant because it has to do with all these other ethical conditions in our environment. But it's irrelevant to this conversation about what does it mean to be a feeling organism uh, in terms of what's the value weight of that. What's the value weight of the difference between uh, me being miserable uh, in terms of what I feel and sense, and me being comfortable in terms of what I feel and sense. And those two states exist. There's no subjective, objective argument to be had here. No human being exists in some perpetual euphoric state, nor does any human being exist in a perpetually miserable state. Uh, they all migrate between states, and that migration has, a, I think, it should be established as a premise, a, a absolute fact, that those states have qualitative difference, that one is better than another. As a state, in and of itself, uh, it's an improvement in condition. Oh, man. But no, let's not do that. Let's just keep arguing about you know, whether... You know, ham sandwiches are better than peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I mean, it's just goddamn so irritating. Uh, so anyway, back to the intelligence thing. I think I'll switch hands. I don't know, this camera picks up noise. Maybe it's the gloves. I don't know, it's usually this jacket. Or maybe it's the other jacket. No, this jacket makes noise for some reason. You know, there's a thumping sound. I don't know where that comes from. <laughs> within a couple of videos. This doesn't have sleeves. That shouldn't be the problem. I mean, it doesn't have, you know, flapping style sleeves. Anyway, it's cold. I should have wore the other jacket, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where was I? How intelligence? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, what's this, the basic knowledge base? that any intelligence, anything we're going to call a super intelligence or any kind of intelligence or anything like smart, what does it have to know to be potentially smart, potentially wise? Maybe that's the right word to use, is wise, 
wise does imply uh, correctness. Uh, you know, and that's the important word here, is what is the most correct or what is the biggest correct intelligence? What would the ultimate big correct intelligence think? <laughs> you know, or even the, the 98% uh, complete intelligence think, uh, whatever the number you want to get. Um, but what would be the minimum knowledge base? Uh, I mean, you have evolution, replicating DNA molecule, uh, toolkit, uh, intelligence, our uh, reasoning capacity, one of the tools, uh, desire mechanism, uh, carrot whip, to motivate the organism to use its tools to uh, accomplish the task of maintaining the body and uh, procreating a new being into the future to uh, satisfy the uh, design specifications <laughs> of a replicating molecule. Uh, and uh, the motivation function comes with this uh, noise feature, this aberrant, this side effect of uh, creating a qualitative sense state of being that can be decidedly good or bad. Comfortable or uncomfortable, more specifically. Um, and, uh, yeah, what that in and of itself as a, as a thing, what else in the universe, what other property manifests by a entity, a collection of matter, what other manifestation of a collection of matter has more significance than a conscious state. Can we find something? Is there any other matter in the universe doing something more important, more significant, more meaningful, more relevant, more uh, value rich uh, than a sentient consciousness experiencing conscious states of welfare? Is there, can we find anything? I would argue that no super intelligence could find anything. No human intelligence, no any kind of intelligence could miss the truth that this is the significant manifestation, uh, that this is the only manifestation that matters. The rest of the matter can just matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, but when this matter matters, it matters. <laughs> yeah, that really does make sense. I know it doesn't sound like it makes sense, but it makes sense. Uh, so, uh, yeah. And uh, that's the minimum. You really got to know that. You got to know that consciousness is the value game. That's the currency of this game. That's the what we're playing for. Uh, that's the value. And... Uh, the, 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 and it's the only value, but unfortunately, <laughs> there's no reason to um, create the value. There's no reason to commoditize this thing and force the exchange of it, to force there to be a price paid for it. So if you can't do it for free, if you can't do it at a profit, there's no reason to do it. You don't play a game unless it satisfies a need condition. Nobody plays a game for no reason because they don't need to be entertained or they don't need... No, it just doesn't happen. Uh, there's no point in putting it at risk uh, for no function, for no uh, profit, for no benefit. And there is no sentience in the universe that needs us to exist. No pre-existing uh, feature or function that uh, requires the payment uh, to be incurred to produce the gameplay. Uh, you know, no, there's no demand to, uh, there's nothing to be accomplished um, because it is, the value is intrinsically, fundamentally, I guess this is another intelligent argument I see here. Careful. Okay. 
Made it. Oh. How are you doing? Oh, how are you doing? Uh, what was it? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, the, so there's no... There's no outlying consumer of the product. So all we have is this value exchange within this closed system. And the value is essentially... Um, uh, now, now, we're back to, now, now we're getting to the more complex argument of placing value, where, again, I'm going to argue that the, the negative states have intrinsically uh, more value weight than the positive states. The positive states are more of a, a manifestation of the satisfaction of a negative state, the resolution of a negative state, the migration from a negative state to a less negative state. Uh, we don't migrate from positive to positive. Uh, we definitely, we know the existence of the negative. The one that's sort of mushy and illusionary is exactly how do we manifest a satisfaction, a comfort state. And that comfort usually requires there to be a pre-existing negative for which the positive is derived through conversion of the negative. Um, so, uh, in net, the game in and of itself just can't produce anything. Uh, it can't produce uh, a comfort state uh, that isn't dependent on a pre existing negative state. So, it's a zero sum game, even in one played very well. And uh, the way we're playing it, it's, in my opinion, a decidedly negative sum game. And the fact that there's nobody else consuming the negative game in some positive way, that we're not converting anything else besides ourselves into a more positive conscious state, uh, dooms the equation. Uh, makes the logical math uh, impossible to navigate uh, to some result that produces a, yes, go ahead, play the game. Uh, the price is too high, the risk is too, uh, uh, too, too significant. Uh, how else to place that? Uh, there isn't sufficient product producing potential. Uh, the machine is essentially uh, attempting to produce what it's consuming. Uh, and so for it to succeed, it would have to essentially become a perpetual energy machine. It would essentially have to produce energy out of nothing, this positive out of a non-negative. Uh, it would break the law of value physics. Uh, it just won't work. Can't happen. Anyway, enough of a video. And such. People. Yuck. Anyway, until next time. And such. I did hit the button.